Welcome back. We want to point out this little trouble spot that's happening here at 410 and McCullough, uh, right around the airport uh, and the uh, North Star Mall area. You can see there's a lot of activity on the side of the road, traffic moving along super slow on 410 toward the airport. Lots of flashing lights there. Uh, we believe it's some type of crash. We're not sure if there's anything more to that just yet. We're trying to get more information. Uh, but as we mentioned to you all afternoon and throughout the morning shows, the commute and the roadways are slick. So be careful uh, wherever you're going today as this uh, might have been a result of wet roads. We're trying to get more information and we'll get that to you as soon as possible. Meantime, take another look at this. Another community forced to leave their homes after a fiery train derailment. This time, it's Minnesota. Authorities say that a BNSF train hauling ethanol and corn syrup derailed and then caught fire early this morning. The rail company said ethanol was the only hazardous material on board and said 22 cars derailed and four caught fire, but there were no injuries. Homes in an area half a mile around the site were evacuated. The Nashville community continuing to honor the victims of that deadly school shooting. Hundreds of people gathering at a candlelight vigil to mourn those three children and the three adults who were murdered. The victims include three nine-year-olds, Evelyn Deckhouse, Allie, rather Hallie Shrugs, and William Kinney. The three adults, custodian Mike Hill, substitute teacher Cynthia Peak, and the head of the school, Catherine Kuntz. Her family said that she gave her life protecting the students that she loved. A friend of hers got pretty emotional during last night's vigil. She was so professional, so prepared, so committed to her faculty and those sweet children of hers. It is said that she had left her office in order to block the way of the shooter and died in the process. Police say it doesn't seem that the shooter was targeting, targeting any of the victims specifically, rather just the school itself, but it is still not clear exactly why. Across the world, the Catholic community is awaiting on an update on Pope Francis's condition. The Vatican says the 86-year-old was hospitalized with a respiratory infection adding the Pope will need several days of medical treatment. This is just one of the latest health battles for the pontiff. In 2021, Francis spent 10 days in the hospital following surgery that removed part of his colon. A year later, a slight bone fracture in his knee forced him to cancel several trips. And as a young man, he had part of his lung removed due to pneumonia. Pulmonary physician at John Hopkins says the Pope's medical history should not be ignored. His age, prior lung conditions, and the lungs being involved in the infection, all of that should be taken seriously. This month marks the 10th anniversary of his papacy. Amid health concerns, Francis has said when the time comes, he may consider stepping down. New research changing what we thought we knew about how to treat brain injuries. CNN's Mandy Gaither with why our cure up to now may have been doing more harm than good. It's long been thought that people who suffer traumatic brain injuries are out of the woods after being treated. It was considered more like uh, breaking a leg where you have a period of recovery, but then once you reach a certain point, then things are, are stable. But a new study of more than 25 years of data is challenging that. Researchers at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center found that some traumatic brain injuries become chronic conditions requiring lifelong treatment. We actually see people changing um, long after their original injury. And actually, the thing you're least likely to do is stay the same. The researchers say some continue to have problems with thinking, problem solving or regulating behavior and are often unsupported after initial treatment, which can make those issues worse. Those involved in the study are working to come up with new ways to help places like healthcare facilities, treatment centers, shelters and even prisons better screen those with traumatic brain injuries and give the care that's needed. If we were to proactively manage um, traumatic brain injury, like we do diabetes, for instance, uh, to optimize someone's health and, and functioning lifelong. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. New findings show more than 43% of people who identified as Latino or Hispanic on the 2020 census didn't pick a listed race. The Census Bureau says about 8% skipped the question altogether and the rest chose some other race. In a statement, the agency says that supports previous research showing many Latinos don't identify with the current race categories. The government is reviewing those classifications for possible revision next year. 
Two reports out today suggesting a slight cooling off of the U.S. economy. The Congress, rather the Commerce Department, says the gross domestic product grew slightly less than expected late last year. Meantime, the Department of Labor reporting first-time jobless claims have increased. It says 198,000 people applied for benefits last week. That would put it above economists' expectations and up 7,000 from the previous week's number. The Labor Department says continuing claims are up as well. Overall, the numbers suggest companies are holding on to their workers. And I hope you're holding on to your umbrellas because it is drizzly out there. Will there be a chance of sunshine today, Justin? Uh, there could be a peak or two of sun, but not a lot. It's going to be a generally cloudy day. You're going to have to wait until tomorrow afternoon for the sun to come out. Once it does, we're going to get some big-time heat tomorrow afternoon. Uh, we want to show you the radar once again because we have showers developing. Most of the drizzle is tapered off, but we still have these uh, passing showers you're going to see here and there. They're going to move pretty quickly, uh, dump uh, a little bit of rain, and then move right along. So as you look at the uh, live radar right now, you'll notice uh, the bulk of the activity is now moved uh, east of San Antonio. We still do have a few light returns here and there, but you're starting to see some of those heavier downpours perhaps move towards the Seguin area. This little shower here will work right up into Seguin here over the next hour or so, and then around San Antonio. Uh, again, generally, generally pretty light here, other than one little shower up around Kirby that we're noticing that'll work its way up towards Windcrest here very, very shortly. And then uh, we should see an overall decrease in the shower activity by the afternoon. We still can't rule out a shower or two, but we won't see as much on the radar, at least here around San Antonio. 72 at 1 o'clock, 75, 3 p.m., 77 at 4 p.m. We'll keep in a 20% chance rain, 78 the forecast high, and then look for some small rain chances tonight and drizzle redeveloping by tomorrow morning. Want to talk about the Valero Texas Open, too. Boy, the golfers are going to have uh, to deal with some Pretty wild weather here in the sense that winds will be switching around every day. Not great for golfers. The greens will be nice and soft today, but you get into tomorrow. We get the hot conditions. Winds switch around to the southwest, then they switch around to the northeast Saturday, and then back around to the south on Sunday. So good luck to the golfers. If you're heading out there, make sure you take some sunscreen tomorrow because the sun will pop out and it will be toasty, guys. Thank you, Justin. There's a group out there wanting to help women start their own businesses. We're going to show you an event that want, may make you want to open your own shop. It's already time to start looking for that summer job and the city of San Antonio's Parks and Recreation has got them up for grabs this weekend. It's a summer job fair happening from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Frank Garrett Multi Service Center on 18th Street. The department hiring temporary employees for roles like lifeguards, administrative associates, recreation instructors and pool supervisors. We have more information at the city's Parks and Rec's website. You can also find this information on KSAT.com. There's a new networking group right here in San Antonio dedicated to empowering women entrepreneurs through connections, resources, and education. Tiffany Huertas has a look at how this group is helping one entrepreneur with a passion for education and how other entrepreneurs can get involved. First, a citizen scientist uses their mind. We are a children's educational experience company. Ashley Bird is behind the company called Blooming with Birdie. We design experiences for children both digitally through online experiences that typically come with some sort of hands-on kit. Um, and then we also do in-person experiences that are really curated for children. Bird is a certified Montessori educator and began her business in 2020 with support from Geekdom, a collaborative working space downtown. I uh, went through their pre-accelerator program and from there have just taken off with a ton of support from Geekdom. Now Bird is sharing her experiences and connecting with other entrepreneurs thanks to the Women Founders Network at Geekdom. The networking group held their first meeting last month, bringing together 54 women entrepreneurs. Brooke Rodriguez, operations director at Geekdom, says they focus on helping entrepreneurs of all industries. We really saw a need to help women connect with other women, connect with mentors and resources as well. The group will be hosting their second free event for women entrepreneurs on Friday. They will be focusing on financing and funding. 
The event will be held at the Geekdom Event Center on Soledad Street and East Houston Street starting at 8.30 a.m. If you have an idea, whatever, however big or however small, just come and share it knowing that people there are going to be open to receiving it and supporting you. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Awesome stuff. Thank you, Tiffany. Now, here's the information again for the group's second meeting. It'll be tomorrow morning from 8.30 to 10 a.m. at the Geekdom Event Center on East Houston Street. And again, this is free to attend. Take a look outside with live cam. We're still watching this trouble spot. Again, this is on 410 at McCullough, right around North Star Mall in the airport. Uh, it's not a big deal. It's just a friend to render, but as has been the case all morning long, these little fender benders cause major issues for those coming across them. So you need to really be paying attention because the roads are still slick, Justin. And it's always that light drizzle that almost makes it worse. And if we were to get a heavy rain, it just sweeps all the oils off. When you get the light rain, it mixes with the oils and hey, it's just not a good situation. 71 so far today, 60 was the low this morning. Averages are 77 and 55. Records are 97 and 29. We still have big spreads in the records this time of year. 1946 and 1944 is when those were set. Uh, we're going to see some warm temperatures tomorrow, maybe near 90. Not record levels, but hot nonetheless. We'll take a look. Coming up. All right. Got a little bit of rain today. Do we do? We need oh. it desperately. We do. Is it all over? Uh, it's not over yet, but we're starting to see the drizzle kind of uh, go away. There still are a few showers, but I think as we get into the afternoon, you'll see less and less on the radar. Uh, it was nice to see some rain, though, and I'll show you the drop monitor here in a second how badly, badly we need rain. Uh, the radar right now does still show a few showers here and there. These are light. Generally across San Antonio, you pick up some heavier downpours, albeit uh, very quick moving and small downpours, but downpours nonetheless off to the east of town. A look across San Antonio right now, and uh, yeah, we still see a few of these very light showers. Uh, they're not going to amount to much, uh, but we are still seeing the wet roads too. Right around China Groves, you know, a little shower there. These will all continue to funnel north. And then as you go east of town, as I said, uh, there perhaps are a few heavier showers. Stockdale. Uh, north up towards Lavernia, we've seen some of these passing showers. They're just moving so fast uh, that it just it doesn't last very long at all. And I think that you'll continue to see a lot of this activity kind of shift east of San Antonio during the afternoon hours. We'll still get the clouds though, and certainly humidity. And there's one more look at that uh, crash we've been following the fender bender there, uh, Fort Tinn and McCullough. Looks like they're starting to uh, get things picked up there, and traffic is moving a lot faster. But still, be careful out there. We know those roads are. Awful slick. Here's a look at the drought monitor, and uh, the worst part of Texas, worst hit part of Texas, is certainly where we are. You'll notice in the paint handle, there's a little bit of exceptional drought, but it is like a bullseye right over San Antonio. It has been that way for better part of a year now, and we just cannot get rid of this drought situation that we're in. This maroon color represents the worst classification of drought, exceptional, and it includes all of San Antonio now. New Braunfels, Canyon Lake, Holotus, Medina Lake, Castroville, Bandera, the list goes on. We're all in the same boat here, and we desperately need some rain. A little bit we got today helps, but it's not even close to enough. Definitely not drought denting rain. And as we look at Medina Lake, about as bad as it's been, 5.4% full. This uh, takes us back to 2011 and 2013 when we saw Medina Lake do the same thing, fall to these kind of levels, uh, down 31 feet. Uh, we will recover at some point, but it's going to take a good, good heavy rain, and that's not in the cards yet. 71 right now. We've still got some light rain being reported at the airport. Dew point is at 68, and a south southeasterly breeze at about 14 miles per hour. Your forecast today is you plan out your day. You, when you pick up the kids this afternoon, there still could be a stray shower or two, but again, it won't be as wet. 75 degrees at 3 p.m., 77 at 4 p.m., and then 78 is our high temperature. Any plans this evening? I think rain chances are on the low end, but we can't completely rule it out. And overnight drizzle will start to pick back up again, and we'll see some more damp conditions tomorrow morning. Good news here, if you're a fan of the sun, the sun pops out by tomorrow afternoon. 71 New Braunfels, 76 Gonzales, 72 in Kennedy. We are seeing a few peaks of sun down here south and east of town, and then thick cloud cover off to the west. It's still pretty chilly, or not chilly, but cool in Del Rio, where it's 64. Uh, right around 70 uh, here in San Antonio, where we are seeing maybe a, a couple of peaks of sun down there around Stinson. We've jumped up to 74. High temperatures ahead. Oof, we uh, had below average temperatures this week, and now we're going to switch to above average in a big way. 90 tomorrow. 
A little bit of a cool down this weekend, but still above average. And then we're in the low 90s Monday and Tuesday with some warmth before another front comes through. So prepare for the, the heat. And uh, we have an area of low pressure off to the west. It would be nice if this came right into Texas. It does not. It goes north. So we miss out on a lot of the energy. But out ahead of it, we are getting the Pacific moisture aloft and then the moisture at the surface from the Gulf of Mexico, and that is equated to some drizzle and rain this morning. This is 2 o'clock, still shows a couple of showers here and there, but as I said, maybe less coverage by 5 o'clock, one or two showers. Uh, a few more tomorrow morning, and then as we get into tomorrow afternoon, clouds clear out. We got a southwesterly wind now ahead of a cold front, and that's why temperatures really skyrocket tomorrow afternoon. Front comes through sometime tomorrow evening. There could be a storm or two along the front to our northeast. On Saturday, it'll be cooler and drier, cooler with mid 80s, just not quite as hot, uh, but we get uh, lower humidity levels on Saturday. And on Sunday, we'll be at 85, still a small chance for shower. Now, Sunday changes because the moisture comes right back in, and that's why we could see a storm or two. And then, as we mentioned, partly cloudy and hot Monday, Tuesday. Another front brings a small chance for some showers on Wednesday. We'll be right back. Question for you, Bill. Okay, John, you got burnt beans. Okay. Would you assume that that's going to be an award-winning restaurant? Uh, I mean, you know, with the right chef, the right technique, maybe some good seasoning. All right. Well, that's what they've got over at SA Live, burnt beans. We've got that. Yeah. We've got some other great food. But we've also got... Hooray for San Antonio! That's right, instead of Hollywood, because Hollywood's come here. Right, we've got two of the stars from a new movie, Velocity Girl, Ivana and Cole. What's the movie about? So, it's awesome. Velocity Girl is the story of a young city girl who is forced to live in the country. And the most amazing part of it is San Antonio plays such a big role in the movie. It's almost like another cast member. With a bunch of local stars and even big stars. All right, we are going to talk to the directors and hear more from the two stars of this great movie. All right, and Jen's got a preview of the D'Anthony Salon Hair Show. That's right, they're celebrating 30 years at D'Anthony Salon Spa, and we're getting a preview of the big hair show, all for a good cause, happening this weekend. Take a look at one of the models. That's one of many that will be featured. All right, and we have got some yummy food. Take a look at these delicacies here. Frida Calorie. Boy, we're going to tell you where you can get that. Some authentic Mexican recipes. And, of course, a yummy salad. Look at this. We're going to build our own with what's in season. Right locally here, too, and where you can get one of these great salads on top of that. Okay, back to the movies. If you're going to have a movie made about your life, what would it be called? Oh, let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and so Twitter. Many, so many choices. <laughs> that and a lot more coming up.